Yes, greeting every, greetings everyone. So um, this is the Signs of the Season New England Phenology Program. Um, and our session three is going to be looking at um, setting up a site, uh, selecting your plants and animals and entering data into Nature's Notebook. So our objectives for Signs of the Seasons, as most of you have heard, <laughs> is to increase climate literacy of citizens in Maine and New Hampshire. And actually we have a, a large uh, wilderness site in Massachusetts too, through Signs of the Seasons. And that's, we're observing uh, of, and recording local effects of climate change and uh, increasing the literacy of citizens in those three states and contributing meaningful data to researchers and resource managers trying to understand and adapt to the local effects of our changing climate. So we have 22 indicator species and one intertidal uh, species, and um, we have uh, a combination of plants and uh, animals, mostly birds, and amphibians. So we went over last time um, how to uh, how to actually make observations, and this is a completed data sheet. So, basically, uh, selecting putting the date and the time, and looking at did you see or hear these different phases called phenophases, different stages of of development of these different uh, species. And this happens to be American robin. So, um, you know, for this is we fill out a data sheet and then we are going to be look at how to put that on um, the web um, site. So filling that out, you know, active individuals. Yes, we saw two and uh, calls and songs and we, we heard one. So So entering data in nature's notebook. Okay, so this is the National Phenology Network a website. It has a lot of information and resources. Um, some of those are seen here, uh, tracking the status of spring, seeing forecasts of pest invasive species, and of course, Nature's Notebook, which is where we uh, have our, their, where their very sophisticated and user-friendly database exists, and that's what we use for our database. And we we're very close partners of the National Phenology Network. They started, I think, in um, 2008 or 2009, so just, just before we started uh, developing our program in 2010 and we've remained really close, having very close partnership with them. So here we are um, on the, the home page of Nature's Notebook. So looking at this, um, there are a lot of resources on this as well. We're just going to go through and do the basics to get you started. So if you look at the bottom left in the green, it's uh, join Nature's Notebook, and that's what we're going to do. Gosh, this is very touchy. Okay, hang on. Okay, so this brings us to this page, Become an Observer. So there's a lot of information here, but we are have gone through a lot of this. There's still some resources. And uh, basically, if you, uh, there are three ways that you can get resources in case you have questions, which includes, one is this site, um, this site has a lot of instructions on it. Um, and secondly, we have a video that uh, takes you through this process in detail that you can stop and start to review any aspect of data entry, pro uh, the, the data entry process. And third, you can contact one of us via email to set up a one-on-one -on -one session. So just to let you know, there are resources at hand. So looking at this, if we already had um, uh, set up our mobile app, uh, then we wouldn't be uh, putting the data online. It would be on the mobile app. But this is, there are many places where you can download that. And to the right orange bar, that's, that's one place you can do that. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to sign up uh, here, which is the lower uh, bar. And as you'll see as we go through, the orange bar is really an important um, function on this website. So. Um, here we are at the user account um, registration uh, web page. So we're going to put in, you're going to put in your username that can be anything from basically, you know, a nickname or your dog's name or whatever you uh, care to put in there. Um, then your email address and then confirming that, your password, confirming your password. There is a, um, you know, some characteristics for password strength. And if you don't get it right or they think you left something out, they'll let you know. 
Um, so Nature's Notebook uh, is selected for a bi-monthly newsletter. I highly recommend it, that you keep that because it's really of great interest. Um, then there's an opt-out of the leaderboard. This is a new thing. Um, Nature's Notebook keeps a running leaderboard. It shows the username and state of the most active volunteers. And if you select this, this checkbox, you, you won't have your account included on the leaderboard. So that's up to you. Okay, so we filled that out. And, um, and so next we're going to um, look at, so you scroll down from that page and there's um, partner groups here where you can scroll down in the long list. There are a lot of groups throughout the country. Um, and you'll come to Signs of the Seasons Network. You will click on Signs of the Seasons under in that network. And then it will show up in this bar below, selected items. Um, and then you will agree to the terms of use and, and make sure they know you're not a robot. And then you can on the, then you click the, again, the orange bar to create this new account. So, um, so this is, um, if you, uh, so once you set that up, you have an observation deck. When you have everything set up, you will go back into, just log into uh, Nature's Notebook and, and there will be observation deck right at the top. You click on that and everything that of yours will, will come into view. So it's really a simple process once you finish this registration process and setting up. So, um, you want to go down to my account. You're currently logged in. Well, that's not us, but we're going to pretend. And, uh, and we'll click on the orange bar that says my account details. And so now we're going to go off of this to, um, so we're going to add a new site. We're going to add your site. And so if you type in um, a name, um, for your site. I'm just going to make all this up. And then you put your address. So So this is um your, this teardrop will come up, this red teardrop um, at your site that you select. So you can either do that, or if you know the latitude and longitude, you can put that in. But, um, so this is on the road, right? So I, that's not really where my site is. So I'm able to drag this and drop it in my actual site location. So in that cleared spot there. And um, so that's a, a the simple way of getting your site selected. And uh, it gives you, it will come up with your latitude and longitude and your elevation for that site. So then um, you want to look at the different options for, to describe that site, which is really helpful in the analysis of the data. So the degree of development surrounding the site can best be described as, and you have a pull down and you can do urban, suburban, rural, wildlands, et cetera, or you can do other if it doesn't match those and put it in the comment box below. So I'm gonna select rural and the site is best described as, and I'm gonna say, there's all these different options. I'm gonna say landscaped area, because there's a house there. How close is the nearest paved or maintained road to the site? I'm gonna say, you know, so many feet, let's say, it's not right, but five feet. <laughs> um, and how close to the nearest uh, body of water. And also, I'm gonna say 200 feet. And what's the area of the site? Uh, let's say one acre, 0.5 acres. Okay, so there you have that. And so that's, that's describing the site itself. Then you wanna click on this orange um, bar here that says plants. And you're gonna answer these questions that will help scientists you know, who use your data on plant observations. If there are trees at the site, they can best be described as mostly evergreen, deciduous, so forth. I'm gonna say deciduous. If this site is on or near a slope, and this one is, it's at the, at the bottom of a slope. And if yes, the slope faces, and I'm gonna say east. And then any comments that you want to make about that site that would that you want to remember. So then um, you would go to the animals um, orange box 
to also describe what, what's there. And if there are domesticated animals outside the site, you please specify that below. And there aren't, so I won't do that. Um, if there is a flower garden or, or vegetable garden maintained at the site, there isn't that either. Um, you can also, so you select um, yes, no, or unknown. If there are feeders, specify below. There aren't any for this site. So any comments that you want to make in the comment box about the animals. So you've basically done all of that and you don't have to do that again. So that's all finished for to describe your site. And then you just click again on the orange um, bar that says create site. So we're going to create that site. Okay, here we are. Um, okay, so you'll uh, then want to, um, we've already edited our site. We, we use this, this is a different name, but this is our site, it's a side yard. And now we're gonna add or edit plants and add or edit animals. So uh, we're going to start with uh, Forsythia and you wanna make sure that at the top here, you've selected the correct site. So this is our side yard, so that's correct. And to add a plant from the list of plants, we'll start typing in its common or scientific name in the plant species box right here. And so we typed in Forsythia 1. And um, well, actually, we'll type in Forsythia. It'll come up with 1. And if you have a second Forsythia, it'll name it Forsythia 2. You can change that name if you want, but it's kind of handy to, to have them numbered for you so you don't forget. Um, then we'll want to do the shade status. It'll give you a, a, a pull down menu of you know, mostly sun, sun, partly sun, uh, shady, that kind of thing. Wild, um, no, this isn't wild. Uh, watered, no, it's not watered, and no, it's not fertilized. Gender, that's unknown. And if you know the planting date, you can also put that in. You can delete um, uh, uh, certain things, and, uh, and you can also um, let, let you know, put on there when it's dead and then, then it won't be uh, known to be carried forward. Um, so in each one of these question marks, there's information about um, what you're doing. So there's a little, in, little mini instructions in there. Um, and you can also add an image to your, to your, your plant, for your plant and your site, and, uh, and make any comments that, that you care to make for that, um, that plant. So, uh, and you do that for each of those, um, each plant that you want to, to put into your, um, into your site description, and, um, and then you'll go on to your animals. And so, uh, we're still at our side yard, and we're uh, looking at, uh, if, we, if we select signs of the seasons here, it will populate all of our uh, animals uh, into this box. You can either add all of these, and if you don't have them, that gives data on negative data, as, I, as we pointed out yesterday, was, is really important when they're not there. Um, but you might wanna just select, uh, we don't have American eels, this is, um, an, this is I think, New Hampshire. But anyway, um, you can select like American robin, you can click on that, and you can uh, go over to this add to checklist um, bar and then it will populate your checklist. So you can do that with, uh, you know, common loon or American toad. All of these we're, we're missing on this list, uh, I think one species, um, tree frog. So anyway, need to get that added. But um, so, okay, so next, um, and then you click here to, uh, to create the checklist at the very bottom. So now we have uh, my side yard that has, so we've populated it with Forsythia, American Robin, two red maples, a monarch, and a ruby-throated hummingbird. So next you can look at, you can, you can select one of these, one of your species, and it will give you the details for this organism. So for Forsythia, for example, um, it will give you um, uh, the picture <laughs> and uh, you can view the species profile, print a data sheet, and print phenophase definition sheets. We have these on our website and would, uh, and they're, they're all together. Uh, you just click on our species, which I'll show you later, um, which are very easy to find and, um, and we've sort of tailored them for signs of the seasons. So now we're going to enter our observations. And so this computer and uh, 
uh, iPad and, and cell phone right here icon is where you're going to do that. So click on that and we'll start to enter our observations. So um, for each phenophase, it's click yes if the phenophase was occurring and click, you know, circle in if the phenophase was not occurring or click on question mark if you were not certain of the species or occurrence of the phenophase. And if you didn't look for it um, at all, then leave it blank. And once you, you click submit observations, your observations will show in blue, but may be edited, but may still be edited. So, whoops. Um, oh, okay, I've got to do this on the... Okay, so um, so this is uh, our side yard again, and we're going to report the contribution of time and our animal observation method and report on snow. And so you scroll down. And so you have this uh, ability to, to put in the time that you spent observing. It's usually 15 to 20 minutes um, for what I'm doing. Um, so I would put 20 minutes and then time spent traveling. For me, it would be one minute because I'd be going outside my door uh, to my yard. And so this is in a three column setup. So this one was for 5 to 2014. So you also, of course, want to put the date and time in there. And then you report your animal observation methods, which is standard. It's walking three minutes on a transect line through your site. Um, so reporting on snow, um, that wasn't too long ago that we could do this, but there's, um, so there's, there's no snow and there's no snow and you would put the percentage of snow if you, um, if there, if that was the case. So, and you scroll down and you're going to um, enter your f first forsythia, your first plant. And uh, so it's basically exactly the way it's set up on your data sheet or on the mobile app. And so you're going to just be circling what you what you uh, had observed. So it'll be a circle of a yes. And then this is a pull down menu for uh, the intensity. So um, if it's a three to 10 um, breaking leaf buds, then that's what you would you would put in there. Uh, we didn't see uh, there are no leaves uh, and no increasing leaf size and none of these other things until you get to flowers. And there's flowers or flower buds and that was a, a yes and the intensity was 11 to, to 100. So that's the process for inputting your data via the, the website. Um, so on so then you would uh, do that for each species that you have, and then you would submit your observations. There's a few, there are a few places to submit your observations, and this is where it gets critical because the only good data is the only data that gets um, reported. <laughs> so uh, you can also enter more data by clicking on the, the orange bar on your right lower uh, side, and then this is the mobile app. It's really, really a great tool. Um, I don't know how many of you are able to do this with, uh, with a mobile app on your cell phone, but um, this works really, really well and it's very simple um, and straightforward. Uh, this is the icon, the cardinal, and um, you can find it through uh, iTunes or Google Play Store. It's very easy to find and download. And um, we, we highly recommend that you get your sites, plants, and animals all set up using the computer and browser first and use the app just primarily to facilitate the data entry in the field. It skips the data sheet step. And um, so this information is for those of you who have, have had this already, uh, but it's been updated and it's even better now. Um, so for using that, you would just, at the bottom left, you would just put in your username or email address and your password and log in. And then um, you would have all these things available to you, uh, selections for um, your site um, and for, your, uh, et, for, for submitting your data for your different sites with the different plants and animals. So that's essentially um, the way that that uh, works. So may I just add one thing about that? Yes. 
I was just going to add that um, there was a question earlier about whether when you enter your data on the app, does it automatically load onto the website? Um, the answer to that is yes. It, it needs to wait until it has access to a wireless or if it can sync up um, through, you know, remotely through a satellite. It just needs to be in connectivity in order to do that. But the data will still be there regardless, and it will just sync as soon as it gets back in, in the connection. Um, and so you can actually go, the app is more sophisticated than it used to be. Um, you can go, you can log in or just set it so that it will recognize you and you can enter your data. And then you can actually go back and review data that you submitted already and tell it to sync manually, or it will just do it automatically next time you enter. So um, I haven't looked at the chat box uh, for questions, but Beth, do you wanna, Check that out while I'm going to get up our Signs of the Seasons website to show a few things. Sure, so that was the only question that we had so far, but if anyone else has questions on anything that Esperanza shared already, um, we'd be happy to answer them, you know, kind of go over things now and we can wait till the end. And I also, I guess I'll just reiterate what Esperanza shared about, um, I find it much easier to use my laptop um, to set up the site and kind of fiddle with through all of those drop down menus around how to characterize my site. And then once your site is set, you don't have to do any of that. You just go to observe as soon as you enter the app or enter um, enter the, the site again on your computer with your to enter your, your data from your paper data sheets. So it is, um, it probably takes um, between half an hour and an hour, depending on how many sites you want to set up to do it the first time. Um, and then it takes me to do to observe my four sites and enter all the data. It takes about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour, depending on how much time I, I linger over it. Um, but it's, it's quite quick um, to do it, to do the observations themselves after you have everything all set up. Yeah, so we still, we have, you know, we had a volunteer that uh, until she was no longer able to observe, she was, you know, probably for seven years. She just looked at dandelions in her yard, you know, and it was really great information. So um, I, I think it's, there's the, the, the span of, you know, of, uh, activity and intensity of, of doing this, uh, depending on your, your time frame and your interest. Um, so can you see the website? Yes. Okay, great. So there's, um, of course, you probably, most of you have found the volunteer training uh, uh, section. Um, and there, there are a lot of different um, resources on here. I guess that what I really wanted to show you also was that we have um, quite a few webinars um, already, and we're planning on having some updated webinars for some um, research that's going on in Maine um, by Caitlin uh, McDonough McKinsey. And uh, she's been doing a lot of, and, she, and there is a webinar of hers my internet's slow. Um, so, okay, so here are a few, just to, to show you. There's a great webinar on amphibians um, by Christine Hoffman, who, that's her passion. She did a really great job on that. Um, Caitlin Mc, McDonough McKenzie, uh, her research in Acadia National Park. Um, Seth Benz from Acadia, Nat, director of the Bird Ecology Program at Scudic Institute. Um, his research and information, um, something on ANIC data, which is what we use for uh, our coastal species. And, uh, and then um, again, Caitlin McDonough's research um, in Northern New England um, with um, responses to and populations in these plant communities. Um, so, and then one on loons uh, by uh, Maine Audubon, and then one on rockweeds by Julie Jessica Mullen, who's our close uh, advisor and partner for the uh, coastal signs of the seasons. Um, also, um, just to let you know, these uh, training, online trainings will be on, probably on the volunteer trainings site, or sorry, uh, section of our site. And so we'll put those most likely here at the top. So they'll be available to anyone else that you think might be interested. And uh, if there aren't any other questions, do- We do I actually have one more question. Um, 
Uh, Sue was asking um, for some clarification about the site size. Could you go back to that? Um, just to kind of go over that again. So she was asking about when you enter your site, it asks for the acreage or this, the, you know, the units. Um, mm -hmm. And sh she was confused because yesterday the number 15 acres was mentioned. Oh, okay. Yeah, a 15 acres is like if you had, I mean, the example I used is if you have a pond and it's a 30 acre pond, you'd want to divide it up into two sections, two sites, so that you could uh, actually see uh, the loons or whatever you're observing out there. Um, your, your site may be, uh, I mean, I have four sites. I'm sorry, I have three now. Um, and it's, it's, they're essentially probably, they're very small. So um, I, I you know, unless it's, it's not really about uh, acreage because it's more about the, the, the actual site and what you're monitoring for. Um, if you have plants, then it's gonna be the, the, the area in which you, uh, those plants are located. And that might be like a, it could be a, a 10 foot by 20 foot, you know, space, or it could be, um, you know, uh, several yards, or it could be the size of a quarter of a football field, or, you know, there's so many um, different s sizes of, of uh, sites that would be appropriate for your location. So it's really more of what you're monitoring. And if they're plants, um, you know, it, and it's also based on the, you know, is it, is it a, a grassland? Is it a, a you know, a, a marsh area is, you know, what, what's the habitat area that you want to stay within? Thanks, Esperanza. And there are a couple more questions. And, and I'll just add that the 15 acres was designated by the National Phenology Network as it's really the largest area in which you could feasibly see and hear animal species. And so that was kind of the maximum that you would ever want to use. And most sites are much, much smaller than that. Um, and again, it would have to be in an open area where you could see the whole way. Um, so our next question was um, for rockweed observations. This is from Claudia. Um, are animal observations entered for each observation date? Um, as in, I saw a gull, seal, osprey, bald eagle, or cormorant, or animals logged once and for all as, as species that, that the observer has ever seen at that site? Okay. I'm. I'm I got part of that. I think that, okay. so those are not, um, those are not uh, actual species that we have. And our coastal program is really, um, coastal SOS is just Ascophyllum nodosum, which is a rockweed that's ubiquitous along the coast of Maine. Um, so I could talk a lot about that. But um, as far as if there are those birds um, and you want to, to observe them, uh, they you would check on the Nature's Notebook site to see if they have those species categoried um, and, and that if that's on their, uh, in their database. So it's pretty, pretty easy to look up any species that you're interested in that we don't have on our, our, uh, our list for signs of the seasons, our indicator species list. And then I didn't catch the last part of that, Beth. Oh, sure. I can, I can just address that part. Okay. Um, so she's also wondering uh, whether, you know, that was an example, I think, for rockweed. But if you, um, and we, like Esperanza mentioned, it's a totally separate, because the National Phenology Network database um, treats rockweed as a vascular plant, and it really isn't, it's very different. And we wanted to also collect growth rate data and so forth that would be used useful for our collaborating researchers. We use a separate database called ANIC data. So um, the National Phenology Network database is just for the, all of the terrestrial and um, other birds and, and insect species, and the rockweed is separate. But I think your, your bigger question was about whether or not you observe animals each time or you, or you just make note that you have ever seen them at that site. And the answer to that question is yes, you would observe them each time and that we standardize the animal observations to a three minute time period so that one person's effort can be directly compared to another person's effort observing that species. So if you wanted to observe hummingbirds in your yard um, or at a feeder, you would um, pick the time that you wanna go out and then observe for three minutes and then note, note down how many um, you heard or saw during that time. And the next time you go out, you would do the same thing. 
Um, no, that, no, go ahead. And then I just wanted to, there's another question about um, incidental observations. And um, the incidental observations are simply for if you were out for a walk later that same afternoon and it wasn't when you had decided to do your observation for that day, but you did see something or you wanted to make note that you saw it for the first time that season, um, you could enter that as an incidental sighting. Um, and it, that's a way to just sort of count that sighting without having to go through the whole um, process of, of making a whole observation. Uh, so that brings up another point uh, that I don't think we've covered. Maybe we have, but I wanna, I wanna uh, just address it again. And that is when to collect your data. So when to go out and make observations. You know, if you can set a time and a date, a day of the week that you can go out and, and make this, you know, just like researchers do with their, with their programs, they, projects, they will, you know, set um, a certain time and, and date to make observations for phenology. And um, if that's possible, that's, you know, that's even um, greater degree of uh, specificity for the analysis or the data analysis. So if that's possible, um, you know, to say I'm going to go out on, on, I sort of selected Sunday morning myself, and so um, I typically would, would go and make my observations on a Sunday morning between like um, 8 and 10 or something like that. Um, and so if you can do that, that's, that's optimum, but if you can't, that's fine. So um, another question, just to clarify around that same point, um, was that if you want to put in comments about other species you, you've seen at that same time, um, you could absolutely do that in the comment box um, or any other interesting observations that you make. Um, and as Esperanza said, if there are species at the site that are not among the 22 species that we've selected as indicators for our program, you can absolutely register those uh, species in your, in your species list for that site as well. Um, and it's an additional data that the National Phenology Network will use. Um, and it, it just shows, you know, you know, more engagement among our volunteers and it's absolutely fine to do that. We do ask that you select at least one of the signs of the season species for every site, just so that we can um, increase our number of observations on these indicators that we've selected with our partners. Um, so moving on, there's another question about whether or not we have social media or social component to the oh. program and um, yes. with uh, F Facebook, for example. So Esperanza, do you want to talk yes. about that? Yeah, we have, we have, a, a, we have Facebook and um, we would love for people to, to use it more. Um, that it's, uh, it's, you know, if you look up, it's just under signs of the seasons. And so that brings up another thing that, um, that we will be after this, uh, by Monday morning, uh, or sometime Monday, we'll be sending out um, a, an email follow up, and it will have our link to our Facebook page, as well as uh, the things that we've been talking about and all the links that, that you might need. Um, and uh, any information. And uh, we so appreciate any follow up from you uh, as to uh, you know, what you're doing, what your needs are, um, et cetera. And we usually send out, we have been sending out a survey at the end of the season uh, to gather more information so we can improve the program. So we're always open to doing that. Are there any other questions before we wrap up? Just turn my video back on so you can see me. Um, great, well, as Esperanza mentioned, we're here and we would love to hear your questions. And I also just wanna make a special plug. If you take photos of any of your species um, in your yards or wherever you happen to be observing, those are really fun for us to see and share um, on our Facebook page, but also um, we do from time to time profile um, volunteers on our website, you know, if you're willing. And so it's really nice to have collections of, of photos of our species from around the state and to kind of compare via Facebook when things are happening in different places. So thank you everyone. It's been a pleasure to uh, experiment with you um, on this online 
data uh, entry thing and and the whole uh, three sessions and we really appreciate appreciate your in, your participation so enjoy the rest of your day and we'll be in touch <laughs>